loyal subjects, the summer is here. Indeed, we have now for some five months been in a state of confinement due to the arrival of the Covid and the contagion that has spread far and wide across the land. It has been a long time and I am now advised that in certain parts of my realm it is considered safe for people to once more go abroad and to engage with all those many activities at which for so many weeks we have been left without. And with this, my mind does turn to sports. I have a deep interest in all manner of sports indeed. When I was a young man, I would ride, I would course, I would joust, I would hunt, I would wrestle, I would fight. I did take part in all manner of sporting activities. But now, I'm an older man, and indeed, I am living proof that the practice of sports can indeed be a most dangerous undertaking. Indeed, as a young man, I would take part in all manner of sports. It was not until the death of my brother Arthur, Prince of Wales, for he was due to be king upon his death, when I was created Prince of Wales, and by the grace of God, it was I who would become king. My desire for sporting activity was tempered as of necessity. My father, having lost his principal heir, I, being his only boy, it was necessary for me to not take part in certain sports, for fear that I would indeed injure or indeed kill of myself. Indeed, on occasion, on occasion, I, I would disguise myself and take part in that most noble of sports, that most gentlemanly of sports, the joust. I would appear as an unknown anonymous knight to take part on the lists, along the tilt rail, with my great steed and I richly armoured, my horse richly armoured and comparisoned, two great men on two great horses would charge against each other to score of points. It is a most splendid undertaking. When I became king and there was no one now to tell me what to do, I still did engage in sports, but my counsel, they were also feared. A fear that if I should be injured or at worst killed, there is no heir. But then, as king, and against the advice of my council, I again would uh, appear as an anonymous and unknown knight in the lists. Although it is fair to say, many did know it was me, their king. But sport does have its price. I remember. Many years ago, when out hunting, for hunting is indeed that most gentlemanly of sports, as is jousting, I, taking part in le chasse, the chase, we gentlemen do perceive that the chasse, the chase, is a form of training, a preparation for the field of battle, and on one such occasion I did attempt upon my horse to ford a stream the horse did become stuck in the mud. I was thrown from my horse. I became mired in the mud, face down, and if it had not been for the prompt attention and action of some of my fellows, your king may well have drowned. But of course, the greatest injury I did receive was again upon that field, the jousting field, the tilt yards where in 1536, at a great joust to celebrate the death of my wife, uh, my former wife, Aragon, I was practicing by running at the ring. Imagine a great steed with a mighty knight fully armored upon it. There, armed with a lance, the precision of the jousting act is to strike your opponents at various places 
upon their body for the scoring of points. Thus, precision is absolutely vital. And how one does aim with the great lance is by practicing running at the ring. A, a ring hangs from a rope or a cord. You do charge towards it. The intention of being of piercing that ring right through the center and bringing it aloft upon your lance. And so it was in that fateful year of 1536. I was running at the ring. My horse did falter. My horse did stumble. King and horse locked in a conflict. I did fall to the ground. The horse did fall upon me. I was knocked without my senses for quite some time. Indeed, by those present, it did seem that I was indeed dead. When I did awake, having an injury to my head, I did similarly have an injury to my leg. It is said that the bone is broken and yet is encased within the flesh. There is a wound that will not heal, the disease of pus and blood, and after my leg will swell to an enormous size and then will burst, and all manner of muck and filth to throw forth. It is true, I am severely incommoded by my leg, but not all sporting mishaps have sad endings. And to tell you of one of my sporting exploits, I do need to take you to that year of 15 and 28. In the year of 15 and 28, I had been king for some 19 years. And I did have a great friend, Bishop Vesey. He, the Bishop of Exeter. He had been chaplain to my mother. He had been present at my birth. He had given of good service. Now he did hail from a small town that sits at the junction of that great forest of Arden in Warwickshire and Cank Wood in Staffordshire. That place is the town of Sutton Coldfield. Now Sutton Coldfield was a manor, a manor that previously had been possessed by the earls of Warwick. But when that foolish man Warwick, known as the Kingmaker, did throw in his lot with the Plantagenets in that great War of the Cousins, which you may know as War of the Roses. In that great war, Warwick was to fall upon the field of battle. And when my father, many years later, did take of the crown at the field at Bosworth, now King, as Henry VII of that name, he did take unto himself as spoils the property of those noble families who had fought against the House of Tudor, or to be precise, the House of Lancaster. And so it was that the manor of Sutton Coalfield, previously belonging to Warwick, the kingmaker, did become property of the king, my father, King Henry VII. My father, the king, did never venture to the Midlands to visit his manor at Sutton Coalfield. But then my good friend, John Bishop Vesey, a son of that town, did say unto me that I should visit my manor of Sutton Coalfield. And so it was in the year of 15 and 28, I did venture north to the Midlands, where I, the king, lord of the manor, was fated by the local people and I did have occasion to go hunting La Chasse upon the park of Sutton. It was a great expanse of land. It was a royal hunting ground, a park that was known for the prevalence of wild boar. And thus, together with Bishop Vesey and members of my traveling or riding court, we did go unto Sutton Park to hunt of boar, where we have beaters who do beat and make of a noise to force the boar towards our position. Upon a boar being put up, 
we do chase, and we do chase, and we do chase, and thence, as we draw near to the boar, having a short boar spear, one does lean forward in the saddle and does prick that boar with the spear, leaning forward in my saddle, and piercing of the boar with my spear, the boar, being a feisty fellow, did rear up my horse, it did shy, and once more, your sovereign ordered king was thrown from his horse. Finding myself upon the ground, I was in very close proximity to this now wounded wild boar. The boar did display all the signs of being prepared to charge, attack, and gore your king. I, my loyal subjects, was in danger of my life. However, however, a young lady, a local from the town of Sutton Coldfield, who it would seem was out upon my royal park, no doubt engaged in that dreadful crime of stealing of game, of uh, birds, of pheasant, of deer, and such like, poaching. She did happen to be in close proximity and did witness this very scene, that moment when your king, when your king's life was in danger. That young woman, being armed with a bow and arrows, did step forth and did survey the scene where I was in danger of losing of my life. She did draw forth an arrow and did kill that boar stone dead with one shot. The life of your king was saved and for her noble duty rendered unto your sovereign that day, I did restore her family to her lands and subsequently did many good things in the town of Sutton Coalfield. My joy at visiting of the town and surviving this incident with the boar, for this I did bestow upon the town of Sutton Coalfield that title, the royal town of Sutton Coalfield forever and in perpetuity, but more, but more, whereas all had belonged to me, the king, the manor, the park, and such like, I did devolve to the people of Sutton Coalfield, the town, the park, and all the monies that it did accrue forever and in perpetuity to the people of Sutton Coldfield. And once more, and finally, I did give to the people of Sutton Coldfield as their town's badge, as their emblem, the Tudor Rose, that rose white in the center of the House of York, Red upon the outside for the House of Lancaster, the red superimposed upon the white, the House of Tudor. And if you are wondering of what did befall that boar that so nearly took your king's life, and this, my loyal subjects, is the one that did not get away. <laughs> <laughs> My loyal subjects, as I have already said, being in confinement for so many months, even though now the summer is upon us, it has meant that there are many months wasted when perhaps we could have been upon the field of sports, where perhaps we could have partaken of La Chasse, our great hunting expeditions. To such an extent, I will have you know, that our larders, our pantries, are now somewhat depleted of those fine foods, the flesh, the deer, and the boar that we do so delight of. And thus, in these strange times, we have had to um, embrace strange uh, mechanisms. There is a wagoner who has come hither these past few days, hearing that the royal hounds have not had their surfeit of boar and such like, which they would normally have, and he has bought what is now termed 
a modern substitute. You do observe before you boar flavoured dog treats. I'm told they are low in fats and are very good for your dog. Hmm. Hmm. I will try them on my royal hunting companion, Slasher. Slasher! 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 Come hither! Come to your master! Ah, yes! Oh, she likes them! Slasher! Oh, it seems that Slasher likes them! I must speak to my housekeeper and make sure we place an order for sufficient wild boar flair. Oh, help yourself, Slasher, by all means. Wild boar flavoured treats. And now, my loyal subjects, as the summer is upon us, and perhaps you may consider it safe to emerge from isolation, be pleased to take a care. The scourge of the Covids has not fully passed. And may the Lord our God bless and keep you all. Are those good, Slasher? Would you like another? Oh, yes. for the subscriber giveaway. The competition is open to all subscribers, old and new alike. Once I reach 250 subscribers on my YouTube channel, I will choose one of those subscribers at random out of that 250 to receive a special prize. The prize is made up of this delightful figure, somebody you may recognize. Together with this prize of this delightful figure, there'll be a selection of merchandise from my theatre show, Divorced, Beheaded, Died. The competition is open to all loyal subjects, where they may be across the globe. All you have to do to have a chance of winning is to subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking the link below. So whether you've been subscribing to my YouTube channel since the beginning, or whether you have just subscribed, you all have an equal chance of winning this wonderful prize. And so, good luck, and thank you all, my loyal and most well-beloved subjects, for your continued support. Cheers.